If you're watching this video on your computer, then you're probably logged in with a user account. A user account is one that is associated with an individual, a specific person who has been assigned this account. Your account probably has a name associated with it. For example, the username I log in with is Professor Messer. There's also behind the scenes a specific identification number that associates this account with that particular name. And the operating system usually refers to the number associated with the account rather than referring to Professor Messer as that account name. If you have a computer where multiple users are logging into that same computer, one thing you may notice is that the files associated with your account are not able to be seen by users of other accounts. This, of course, is by design. If you're creating and saving files under your username, you would have to specifically allow those users access to the files. Otherwise, they won't be able to see them. User accounts are specifically designed not to have full access to the operating system. This means that if malware or some other type of malicious software was running as that user, they would only have certain access to the operating system and ideally would not be able to make any significant changes to the underlying OS. By default, this is the type of account that every user should have. Even if this is someone who is a system administrator or they're doing some other type of work in IT, they would still use a user account anytime they are not doing anything specific to that operating system. This limits the amount of damage that could be done to the operating system if something was to execute as this user account. A shared account is an account type used by more than one person. If you have a guest login or an anonymous login, this is an example of a shared account. The problem with a shared account is it's very difficult to know exactly who performed a particular action on that operating system. Since everyone's logging in as guest, you aren't exactly sure who was logged in as guest when a particular function occurred. This also makes it difficult to assign the proper permissions to an account since so many different people could be logging in with the same account name. And if multiple people are using the same account, imagine what happens if the password changes on that account. How do you inform all of those individuals sharing the same account that this password has now been changed? This makes it difficult for users to keep up with all of the different changes. And what they may end up doing is writing down the password and storing it somewhere, which of course is a very bad habit when it comes to passwords. The best practice for shared and generic accounts is to simply not use them at all. Everyone should have their own personal account associated with them as an individual, and no one else should have access to their user account. Guest accounts are a shared account that, until most recently, were a normal part of an operating system's installation. A guest account allows users who don't have a normal user account on that system to be able to log in and at least have some rights and permissions to the operating system. These accounts usually don't have a password associated with them, and they're highly restricted accounts. They don't usually have access to run all of the applications on that system. They have very limited access to the operating system, and you can't change or customize many aspects of the user interface. But even more concerning is that if someone does gain access to your system, it might be possible for them to run some type of privilege escalation and gain full access to the system. So an attacker could log in as guest, which has very limited access to the operating system, take advantage of a vulnerability in that operating system, and now suddenly have full access to the system. Although there is a convenience factor associated with having a guest account, there are so many disadvantages from a security perspective that we've started to disable this and not use it as a standard practice. For example, in Windows 10 build 10159, Microsoft completely removed the guest account, and it's no longer a default part of the operating system. A type of account that doesn't log in interactively and you usually don't see it running on your desktop is a service account. As the name implies, a service account is an account type that is only used by background services in your operating system. So things like a web server, a database server, a print spooler, and the other services that you have running on your system are using some type of service account to gain access to the OS. It's very common for different services to have different service accounts. This allows you to set specific rights and permissions for a service 
that are just for the ability of that service to operate. For example, a web server can be assigned a certain set of rights and permissions that allow people to store and retrieve information from the web server directories. But a database server has a completely different set of files and a completely different set of permissions required for users to access the database server. It makes sense in that case to have two separate service accounts, one for the web server and one for the database server. Just like your normal user accounts, these service accounts have a username and a password. The username is assigned to a particular service, and the password is included along with that service configuration. That means that if there are any password updates on the system, you will also have to change the password in the service. Otherwise, it won't be able to log in and operate normally. If you're a system administrator, then you're probably very familiar with a privileged account. In Microsoft Windows, administrator is the privileged account. And in Linux, your privileged account is called root. These privileged accounts have full access to the operating system. They can change core files. They can modify the kernel of the system. They can manage the hardware drivers and anything else that may be required to run that system. The privileged account has access to the operating system that a normal user account does not have. And it's usually a best practice to use your user account all the time unless you happen to be performing a function that a user account simply doesn't have access to. In those cases, you might switch over to the privileged account, perform those functions required for that privileged account, and then log out of that privileged account and back to your user account once that's done. A best practice for privileged accounts is never to use it as your normal user account, but instead only use it in times when it's required. Because this account has full access to the operating system, it needs to be very secure. So we need to provide at least strong passwords and multi-factor authentication. We might also want to schedule password changes so that we know that we always have a password that has been updated recently for these privileged accounts.